The Chinese government has banned online retailers from selling the Bible. The country has always controlled Bible sales, but there used to be a loophole to permit online sales. Shopping searches on Chinese retailers such as JD.com, Tobao and Amazon, however, are reportedly proving unsuccessful. And new sources are reporting the online loophole has been removed. Most news sources say retailers are not responding to requests for comment. Two unnamed online retailers told CNN, however, customers can still get copies of the Bible from them through private messaging, but public listings of the Bible are now impossible on Tobao. According to the Catholic Herald, the move is another step toward limiting the influence of Christianity in China. Meanwhile, the Chinese government also recently announced it wants to promote Chinese Christianity. According to Christianity Today, China wants to reinterpret and retranslate the Bible to boost Chinese-style Christianity and theology. For United News International, I'm Rachel Latham. An earthquake shook the south land of California on April 5th. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, it registered at a magnitude of 5.3. But the earthquake was centered offshore south of the Channel Islands, about 38 miles southwest of Ventura and 86 miles west of Los Angeles. Residents, however, felt the rumble in neighboring Santa Barbara and Orange County. Some local news outlets reported feeling the quake for minutes in L.A. County, including Business Insider's offices in West Hollywood. Despite having an offshore epicenter, the U.S. National Tsunami Warning Center stated there was no concern of a wave caused by the quake. On Friday, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported the 13th week of flu season had reduced cases of influenza in the United States, but that a second strain, influenza B, was on the rise. UPI reported that rather than getting a strain of influenza A, you have a greater chance of getting influenza B. They carry roughly the same level of severity. Despite the second strain being on the rise, doctors have said that influenza B can be more easily and effectively treated than influenza A. The U.S. has approved the sale of over $1 billion worth of artillery and supporting equipment to Saudi Arabia. The Pentagon announced on April 5th that the U.S. State Department has approved selling Saudi Arabia artillery and equipment in a deal worth $1.31 billion. The Defense Security Cooperation Agency, in a statement, said that the sale, quote, will increase the Royal Saudi Land Forces interoperability with U.S. forces and conveys U.S. commitment to Saudi Arabia's security and armed forces modernization. According to the notice of sale, the prime contractor is unknown at this time. The announcement is the latest in a series of U.S. defense sales to Saudi Arabia. Last month, the State Department approved another $1 billion in arms sales to the Saudis, including roughly $670 million in anti-tank missiles. For United News International in Washington, D.C., I'm Kate Mangum. Billionaire Elon Musk says in a new documentary, artificial intelligence could spur the creation of a robot dictator that could rule mankind forever. Musk said in the film, if one company or a small group of people managed to develop godlike superintelligence, they could take over the world. He continued, at least when there is an evil dictator, that human is going to die. But for AI, there will be no death. It would live forever, and then you would have an immortal dictator from which we could never escape. Musk said that one way to avoid this is to democratize AI. Palestinian words meet Israeli bullets in Gaza. From behind the border fence, Israeli snipers have Palestinians in their sights. They shoot tear gas, then live fire and rubber bullets. Still reeling from their bloodiest day in years, this was the area where last Friday, Israeli snipers shot 700 Palestinians, 21 would die. A week later, they're back with a smoke screen and stretches. The casualty numbers quickly climb Injuries turn to fatalities. These tires that you're seeing, we're not bringing them for war or anything. We brought them to protect ourselves from Israeli snipers. Last Friday's killings happened on what the Palestinians call Land Day. It's an annual protest, an act of resistance to Israeli occupation and the seizure of land for illegal Jewish settlements. This year, Israel warned that open fire if anyone approached the border fence and then they followed through. 1,400 people were injured, many shot by more than 100 Israeli snipers, some in the back as they ran away, another as he prayed. Given the large number of injuries and deaths, 
the ominous statements made by Israeli authorities in the days leading up to the protest, as well as indications that the individuals killed or wounded were unarmed or did not pose a serious threat to well-protected security forces and in some cases were actually running away from the Green Line fence, there are strong indications that security forces used excessive force. Israel has ruled out any investigation by the United Nations or the European Union into disproportionate use of force. It blames Hamas for inciting its people. This is a travesty for the Palestinian people that the Hamas government is encouraging its people to attack Israel, is encouraging its people to commit acts of violence and encouraging them to actually storm into Israel to try to destroy Israel and kill as many people as possible. Palestinians will camp here until the 15th of May, the day Israel was created 70 years ago. Others will continue to press on the border, taunting Israel's security forces and remembering what they've lost, loved ones and land. They hold mirrors to blind the snipers, hoping the world can see as they reflect the violence. Charlotte Ballas, Al Jazeera. Striking at associates of President Vladimir Putin, on Friday, the United States imposed sanctions against Russian businessmen, companies, and officials. It's one of Washington's most aggressive moves to punish Moscow for what it called a range of malign activity, including alleged meddling in the 2016 U.S. election. The action was taken under pressure from the U.S. Congress. It freezes the U.S. assets of oligarchs such as aluminum tycoon Oleg Deripaska, and lawmaker Soleimain Karimov. Karimov's family controls Russia's largest gold producer, Polias. The Treasury Department's sanctions are likely to complicate U.S. President Donald Trump's hopes for good relations with Putin. On Friday, health officials in New Jersey said they are investigating an E. coli outbreak in four counties that left at least eight people hospitalized. The New Jersey Department of Health said that it was in preliminary stages of an investigation that was possibly associated with a popular restaurant chain. A Business Insider report cited county officials saying that the chain under investigation was Panera Bread and that it would be the chief focus of the probe. Of the eight people hospitalized, five have already been discharged. Friday has seen more large crowds of Palestinian protesters gather near Israel's security fence with Gaza and more being shot by Israeli soldiers. Four people have been killed and more than 150 injured by gunfire in the latest protest, according to Gaza medical sources. The protest was smaller than the deadly one last Friday, but the deaths bring the total death toll in the planned six weeks of action to 25. The protests are intended to culminate in the May anniversary of the founding of Israel, which for the Palestinians is synonymous with catastrophe, the loss of their land in Israel, and exile either abroad or internally to Gaza or the West Bank. The Israeli army insists it's only engaging those who enter the forbidden security zone and try to attack the fence, and not the thousands of mainly elderly women and children who hang several hundred meters back and protest peacefully. In recent weeks, self-driving cars have raised a lot of concerns. In March, an Uber self-driving car killed a pedestrian. It became the first ever self-driving car fatality in history. The National Safety Council conducted two polls on self-driving vehicles, one in January and one in the beginning of April. In January, 36% of respondents reported that they found self-driving cars to be less safe than a vehicle controlled by a human. By April, that same index of concern had spiked by 14%. This spike in concern comes as some companies like Google's Waymo are planning to roll out self-driving car services to the public. What if the best way to combat climate change is by dimming sunshine? Some scientists think more effort should be spent on doing so, especially in developing nations. Many Western universities like Harvard and Oxford have already started allocating resources into the study of so-called solar geoengineering. Solar geoengineering proposes the use of man-made chemical sunshade to cool the earth and slow climate change. This could mean releasing aerosols into the atmosphere to limit the amount of sunshine that reaches the earth. Doing so could curb catastrophic droughts or floods triggered by warming temperatures. A report published April 4th in the journal Nature highlights the need for poor nations to take a larger role in solar geoengineering. The report's 12 authors hail from countries including Bangladesh, Brazil, China, Ethiopia, India, Jamaica, and Thailand. 
They argue that developing nations have the most to lose in the face of climate change. For United News International, I'm Mila Uni. In an interview Friday on Bernie and Sid in the Morning on 77 WABC, Donald Trump admitted his tariffs against China could cause some pain in the markets. The president said, I'm not saying there won't be a little pain, but the market has gone up 40 percent, 42 percent, so we might lose a little bit of it. But we are going to have a much stronger country when we are finished. He then added, we may take a hit and, you know, ultimately we're going to be much stronger for it. But it's something we have got to do. A woman who found out her parents' fertility doctor is her biological father through an online service is now suing him. Kelly Rowlett did a DNA test through Ancestry.com and was surprised to find it indicated a man named Gerald Mortimer as her biological father. After speaking with her parents, Howard Fowler and Sally Ashby, Rowlett eventually discovered Mortimer was their fertility doctor who performed an artificial insemination. The procedure was supposed to involve a mixture of Fowler's sperm and donor sperm. The couple requested the donor be a college student over six feet tall with brown hair and blue eyes. Mortimer told them he found such a donor, but then used his own sperm in the operation. At least that's according to a lawsuit the family filed against Mortimer and his clinic. The lawsuit alleges medical negligence, fraud, battery, emotional distress, and breach of contract. For United News International, I'm A Matt greeting Paul. between the British and Russian ambassadors, but it was clear when the meeting started that that is where the cordial relations ended. Russia called for this Security Council meeting to strongly reject UK allegations that Russia carried out the nerve agent attack. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't even know what to say about this. It's some sort of theater of the absurd. Couldn't you come up with a better fake story? We all know what the worth of British intelligence information is based on the experience of Tony Blair. We have told our British colleagues that you're playing with fire and you will be sorry. Diplomats tell me they see this council meeting as part of a pattern. When Russia is backed into the corner, it goes on the diplomatic offensive. We've seen fresh comments in recent hours on the Salisbury case from Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and from Russia's ambassador in London. On Wednesday, Russia called a meeting of the international body that oversees chemical weapons, the OPCW, and brazenly suggested a joint investigation by the UK and Russia. The idea was quickly voted down, but the British ambassador at the UN again referred to it, using a very British literary reference, the villain in the Sherlock Holmes books. Allowing Russian scientists uh, into an investigation uh, when they are the most likely uh, perpetrators of the crime in Salisbury would be like Scotland Yard inviting in Professor Moriarty. Uh, so I don't think that's a tenable uh, way forward. Uh, instead, I fear uh, that the Russian uh, motive in calling for a Security Council meeting today uh, is another step in the pattern of obfuscation and contempt for international institutions. It was at the beginning of March in the British city of Salisbury that the former spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were incapacitated by a nerve agent known to have been developed by Russia. Yulia is getting better, and hours before the Security Council met, British police released a statement from her. It reads, I woke up over a week ago now, and I'm glad to say my strength is growing daily. I'm grateful for the interest in me and for the many messages of goodwill that I've received. Russia and the UK are painting very different pictures of who was behind the attack on Miss Skripal and her father. The investigations by the UK authorities and by the OPCW are likely to be long and detailed, but even when they report their final conclusions, I think there's a strong chance Russia will reject them. James Bayes, Al Jazeera of the United Nations. These Oklahoma teachers are on a seven-day, 177-kilometer march that began in Tulsa and will end in Oklahoma City, the state capital. There they'll join the thousands who've gathered each day this week, demanding that the state adequately funds the education system after a decade of cuts. 
Funding per student has been cut by almost a third. Huge classes are without the textbooks, desks and chairs to accommodate them. Teachers here are among the lowest paid in the country. Many schools are open just four days a week and teachers often use the fifth day of the working week for second or third jobs. An alarmed legislature has acted, raising taxes for the first time in 28 years for teachers' salaries and classroom funding. But teachers say this will only amount to an extra $71 per student across the state, barely a textbook. Teachers specifically are asking to make sure that what was passed last week was funded, because there are some questions about whether or not it's, it's cleanly funded. And then they're saying we'd like uh, another investment in our classrooms. That's why they're here. They're here for their students. U.S. teachers began striking in West Virginia in February. That nine-day action resulted in a pay rise for all public sector workers in the state. Along with those in Oklahoma, teachers in Kentucky and Arizona have taken note. Public sector workers in these reliably Republican states say they've had enough of having to do without as corporations receive tax breaks from conservative legislators. This does sound awfully like socialism, but actually these are all this kind of outpouring of labor activities happening in Oklahoma, West yes. Virginia, Arizona, Kentucky. What's going on? Um, I think uh, Americans are tired of uh, the little people being shortchanged and, uh, you know, our kids are our future and they are tired of it. This isn't just about teachers' wages or classroom funding, but about whether a society can function if schools are sacrificed just so that well-connected corporations can pay less tax. Shia Britansi, Al Jazeera. Hundreds of protesters filled the streets of Brooklyn after local police shot a black man with mental health issues. New York police shot Saheed Vessel on Wednesday, April 4th, after they received a call saying someone was aiming a pistol at people. Vessel was actually holding a metal pipe. Video release showed the 34-year-old holding the pipe and pointing it like a gun on the street. He had both hands on the pipe and aimed it at police before they shot him 10 times. Police said they believed he had a gun. Vessel's father, Eric, told news organizations his son had bipolar disorder but wasn't on medication. People gathered to march on Thursday from the site of the shooting to the police station. They chanted justice for Saheed while carrying signs with his photo and speaking against the NYPD. The shooting comes only weeks after white police officers killed an unarmed black man in Sacramento. United News International, I'm Rachel Latham. New Jersey health officials are reportedly investigating Panera Bread for a possible link to several cases of E. coli illnesses. The illnesses span four counties. Sarah Paramount, public health epidemiologist in Warren County, told NJ.com one Panera location in Phillipsburg, New Jersey is the chief focus of the probe. She added that the matter is still under investigation, so the state health department has not officially named Panera as the source of the outbreak. On Friday, India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party staged a 300-strong rally in the country's financial capital of Mumbai. The next general elections are a year out. The massive rally was a move seen as a show of strength ahead of expected general elections. They're due by May of 2019. The rally was fronted by the BJP's powerful president, Amit Shah, a close friend of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He used the platform to hammer opposition party chief Rahul Gandhi, taunting him with the nickname Rahul Baba. The name can mean baby in Hindi. Shah also used the opportunity to praise Modi's four years of governance. In a news release, the Seminole County Sheriff's Office said that a German shepherd named Max helped firefighters locate two children in a burning house in the Orlando suburb of Longwood. Neighbors who saw the spreading fire called 911 and broke in the windows to rescue the children's mother, Margot Fieser. Max was then able to help firefighters locate Margot's husband and two children. The Fieser family was hospitalized for conditions ranging from serious to critical, and their dog Max was treated for smoke inhalation. North Korea is denouncing a new American nuclear strategy that calls for the U.S. to enhance its arsenal of low-yield nuclear weapons. A spokesperson for the North Foreign Ministry's Institute of American Studies says the U.S. strategy is a declaration of war against the world. As part of our defense, we must modernize and rebuild our nuclear arsenal, hopefully never having to use it, but making it so strong and so powerful that it will deter any acts of aggression. 
by any other nation or anyone else. Perhaps someday in the future, there will be a magical moment when the countries of the world will get together to eliminate their nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, we are not there yet.